Hello, and welcome to Stories from the Wire, the AppNet podcast, where we talk to the experts about the most pressing app and network issues facing the enterprise today and tell you how to work smarter, not harder, to speed up resolution. I'm Paul Davenport, AppNet's resident tech journalist. Each week, we're going to dive into a specific issue that we've helped an IT team tackle. Today and over the coming weeks, we're diving right on into work from home, perhaps the hot topic of the past year. Now, enterprises are optimizing their infrastructure to support a work from anywhere future. In our most recent episode, we played excerpts from a recent webcast with our Chief Customer Officer, Adam Edwards, and our Director of Global Alliances, John Tufek, where they began unpacking the differences between how we manage hybrid work networks pre-pandemic to today. In this next installment of that conversation, we're going to discuss the hot-button topic of security, privacy, and trust in a hybrid work world. Adam kicks us off by discussing some of the most popular networking strategies teams have been leveraging to support remote workers safely, before him and John dig into specific customer examples where security, privacy, and trust either conflicted or complemented network performance. From a discussion on remote global access to Microsoft Teams to some real-life customer deployment scenarios, Adam and John detail the specific metrics teams need to have a handle on to ensure both safe and performant network and app experiences for end users going forward. With that, enjoy the show with so little managed infrastructure sitting in the middle with IT today. Can we unpack what considerations IT should be looking at for the new hybrid cloud reality? And how have those evolved since the start of the pandemic? So other than be afraid, <laughs> so we, you have users now operating from anywhere alongside, that's the hybrid part, alongside your users in the corporate offices as they return. Uh, you've got your apps. Um, we heard on our recent customer advisory board that many of our customers told us, I really wish I could go back to my two year ago self and finish that cloud migration, finish that SaaS deployment. Yeah, I, I came up short. So you've, you've got the, I guess, the culmination of all of those apps moving outside of the on-prem data center. And then the connections are no longer on-prem. So IT here has a much greater distance between itself, the accountability, the management control. Well, I'll say the management control, at least, uh, and the ownership of these assets in the service delivery chain, given this new normal. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the network. I feel like that circle should be even further away <laughs> from IT because that has been the challenge of delivering any application to anywhere at any time over the last year. We've encountered transformations that basically mean an application is being delivered across the network from the cloud, not touching any IT infrastructure that is owned whatsoever. You know, a good example of that is Microsoft Teams. We're seeing kind of a split tunnel internet offload directly to Microsoft Teams, means, meaning we're going right from the user's internet directly into the Microsoft network no part of that is managed by IT, but they absolutely need to have the visibility and understand what end user experience of that connectivity looks like. And also just really simple things. You know, we, we talk about struggles that IT had visibility wise for users over the last year, answering a very simple question like, is this user on Wi-Fi? You know, that, that's something that sounds so trivial and yet has such a meaningful impact and user experience and delivery and all the things that are going to come with trying to provide the best experience to those users, including being able to help them when something goes wrong. You know, I think with, with IT in the middle here, with everything else pushed so far away from a control standpoint, if you've got to troubleshoot that, that situation with a user one user on Microsoft Teams with an Xfinity connection and an in-home Wi-Fi network. If it's not mesh, it's probably meh from a Wi-Fi performance and user experience standpoint. If you're IT and you've got to find that needle in which haystack and you've got a schedule to keep, you're in the middle. And you left probably wondering, if I know if I were in those same shoes is what I hear every day, you're thinking probably, how am I going to work till Friday or WTF? That's a, a <laughs> tough position to be in. Then when you blow that on a scale at hundreds or thousands of users and locations. I have Troubling. to be impressed. I'm very impressed with Mesh Not Mad. Did you make that up? Because I am impressed with that Wi-Fi terminology. I'm absolutely stealing that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> so alluding back, can we discuss some of the security considerations for hybrid work and what IT teams are up against today? Yeah, we have to say zero trust, but this is a very real context that we're that IT is up against. I mean, security is so paramount the concerns around security is growing, the strategies around zero trust is growing, which is really all about any application anywhere at any time and making sure your security posture can support that. Of course, we're seeing more unmanaged devices, especially in the context of that VDI 
piece I was mentioning earlier, you've got third-party contractors that might be your contact center agents and they're bringing unmanaged devices into the environment. Obviously, over the last year, you've probably shipped hundreds, if not thousands of laptops to new employees as, of, as they've started. And their experience of application delivery is going to be shifting from wherever they were on some unmanaged network back into the corporate office. Your security posture has been all about trying to support that zero trust kind of mandate. And uh, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be trade-offs between end user experience and the security posture that you have. I mean, I even think of our own director of IT, Jason, who has to manage this at a small scale. We're, we're not a monster company with tens of thousands of employees, but Jason's encountering this. And you were talking to him last week, Adam, about you know what he was encompassing with laptops as well. Yeah, I had my own um, new user story with uh, with our IT support team recently. I, we did a mid a mid year laptop refresh. Uh, about this time in the pandemic a year ago. And my laptop's been working great. Uh, I operate on Wi-Fi here and at other places and have traveled and it's it's been um, it's been faultless. I stopped by the office to do some work recently and I couldn't get online. You know, zero trust with kind of zero connectivity for me, unfortunately. So it was only in a conversation where I'd reminded that this was a, a recent uh, laptop where we realized that the MAC address hadn't been entered in that facility's Wi-Fi authentication mechanism yet. So once we did that, I was back and running, but it took a support call and uh, a Q&A. And, you know, we've got two relatively IT savvy people participating in that, uh, which is not always a luxury that, uh, that we have. I guess a related story of zero trust causing some issues. One of our large hospitality customers is redeploying new routers, refreshing their routers for WAN connectivity and back office functions at several hundred locations. And they're taking advantage of that on-site to deploy the AppNet or monitoring point to that. Now, deploying AppNet is really easy. You get an IP address from DHCP, you plug it into a LAN port, and it connects, and then all the rest is done really easily. We had the monitoring point, was deployed on the configuration bench the night before, connected, updated, ready for monitoring, and it didn't connect. And you know, we were left there scratching our head, doing some diagnostics. Then we called into the provider's uh, IT department, only to learn that the network access control had not been completed for that device at that site yet. So you can't just go plug in a new client on a LAN. So good news is, that provider's thinking about security. Bad news is that cause a dis causes additional friction with almost every application or monitoring point or deployment that you would have there. So that's a, a zero to one or up and down situation. But we all know there's a lot of room between up and down. And when you think about the multiple layers of security, privacy, and trust that have to work well for users to have valid experience, it's important that you monitor through that end-to-end -end security and delivery network to see how that user is being supported. The IT organization is absolutely going to need to make a compromise and make a trade to manage risk and to have a strong security posture. You know, a, a big cloud provider customer of ours comes to mind where from the top down, they have a mandate that they absolutely will sacrifice end user experience for the sake of security. And that makes sense. The challenge I, I think that we're faced with now is to really assess how big is that risk? What is the impact to productivity? What is the impact to end user experience really going to look like when you go ahead and make that change and make that trade um, for security, which of course is a priority in, on everybody's mind um, in today's day and age. The other thing that I think is interesting when we talk about network delivery and unmanaged networks is that zero trust component is going to extend to understanding how your application traffic is being delivered. How is it getting from point A to point B? I think of also a, a customer of ours who is a location service provider. They have a multi-cloud environment for which they deliver their applications and they absolutely need to understand how applications are being routed over the internet. They have to understand what regions it crosses that has implications around compliance. They have to understand what countries it goes through that has implications of compliance. So that visibility becomes more and more paramount. And speaking about, you know, sort of regional requirements, Adam, you heard this at the VCAB, how really even on a regional basis, this can have pretty significant implications. Yeah, we, um, uh, we ourselves added some great capabilities on our workstation native monitoring point recently to help understand the, the connection type. Is it VPN? Is it not? Is it wired? Is it wireless? 
And then, you know, coming soon will be certain host-based performance indicators so that they can be part of your holistic troubleshooting and diagnostic conversation between IT and a user. Uh, when we talked about that, got our VCAB members really excited. These are our customers who are advising our roadmap and strategy. But we got uh, some really interesting feedback on regional specific privacy and compliance considerations that those features need to be able to be granular per region. You can't collect the same set of information from a global organization depending on one region versus another. So you've got to be really thoughtful. So as if we needed anything more complex in our lives when it came to understanding the last mile and the last 50 feet, but it's out there. Yeah. And I think this is going to get more challenging, you know, that same survey, the future of internet outlook is talking about sort of the expectations of where everyone thinks this is going, you know, just like you want to have electricity, just like you want to have running water, people want internet as a public utility. They want more and more access to public Wi-Fi. You know, if you go downtown, how many public Wi-Fi spots are available where you could be accessing applications, not to mention the rise of 5G, which is going to basically allow your customers to connect from anywhere, which is more of that any app anywhere at any time. This visibility of how your applications actually traverse the network is going to become more and more imperative because it has such a serious consequence, not only on that compliance that we've been talking about, but obviously end user experience as well. All right. Thanks again to Adam and John. And thank you listeners for joining us on Stories from the Wire, the AppNet podcast. Subscribe to our feed to get the latest tips and tricks every week on how to manage network performance for the future of work. 